Mick, we'll start off Friday night. Your runners there in the William Reed Stakes. You've got True Persuasion. What were your thoughts when it ran third at Mooney Valley last week? Look, uh, horse is going good. I'm uh, really happy with him. I ran him there last week. Um, he's a gross uh, stallion type of horse. And uh, rather than galloping on the Saturday morning, I thought we'd go around for the prize money. And uh, he's he's getting there. He's at his top. He's at his top at the moment. And um, look. We're sort of all running for second, aren't we? But uh, if you can run second, I'll be happy, I guess. What have you done with him through the week? Not much. He ran half mile evens uh, Thursday morning, and uh, that'll do him because uh, obviously I'll put his runs together. You know, put a couple of runs close together. Don't want to take the edge off him. He's still got to have enough bang in him to get around 1200 Mooney Valley, but he swims a fair bit. And uh, look, he's a sound colt. Um, I think you'll, I think you'll find he runs up to his best. Where would you like to see him in the run on Friday night? Oh, look, he'll be up there. Uh, Daz Mackin's drawn one and flies the gates. Look, my two might end up one two. Um, don't know where that puts Black Caviar. Probably, well, she can go wherever she wants, I suppose. Uh, the true Persuasion ran second to both Haylist and Black Caviar through the spring. Is he up to that form, re- capable of reproducing that form Friday? Yeah, I think he is. Uh, been happy with him. And, uh, OK, if Black Caviar wins by a few lengths, which he probably will, and we run second, I think that's OK. I think that's, um, that's about where he's at. You mentioned Daz Markin. Uh, were you happy with how she won at Morpherville last time? Race fell into her hands at Morpherville. They ran the first three a lot slower than they ran the uh, last three. And, of course, she jumped and put herself there. She's got a habit of... Uh, stepping away pretty quickly and putting herself right there. Uh, look, we were in two minds whether to go to Morfittville or uh, the Mooney Valley race. The owners just felt that the Mooney Valley race would have less runners in it and uh, I would have probably gone to Adelaide against their own uh, you know, fillies and mares. But um, it is a small field and if she can run a place, it's going to go on a CV as Group 1 placed. Is she capable of being competitive at Group 1 level, do you think? Um, I've never really considered a genuine Group 1 mare, but uh, I thought the fillies and mares was an ideal opportunity for her. And look, realistically, we're running around to try and run second or third, and if she can do that, we'll, be, we'll consider that a victory. In the three-year-old 1,200-metre race, you've got plain lucky. He's a hundred thousand dollar race, um, and there'll be a bit, a bit more pressure on him. Uh, it's a better race than what he has been in. He's still learning. He's going to be a um, pretty nice horse. He's going to win a lot of races. That horse, a real sp- sprinting sort of a gelding. Um, pretty happy with him. He's just got to keep uh, going up the ladder, you know. Um, but it's not a bad race. And uh, look, he puts himself there. I don't know if he wants to lead. I mean, we were happy to lead the other day, uh, drawn nine out of nine, but uh, I think drawn an inside gate. He's going to be thereabouts anyway. In the Sunline Stakes, you've got Nakaya. This would be her toughest test to date. That's not a bad race, that. And, look, she's had a rating that has allowed us to place her and go through her grades. Um, I would be a little bit surprised if she was to poke her head out and win, but uh, this is the run I'm using to get into the Queen of the South which will be three weeks and a day between runs. So uh, I would think by the time she gets to the Queen of the South, she'd be at her top, hard fit. But look, it's a $200,000 group two for mares. And um, look, if she runs a place, uh, we'll be pretty wrapped. At Rose Hill on Saturday, you're taking up Vivid Vixen, who won the Pakenham Cup last time out. Yeah, first way, this way of going. I actually wasn't that excited. We, we worked her on this steeple grass here, um, she had a mile home, two second lap. First lap was all right. Second lap just rolled off the fence a bit. So I'm assuming she's going to handle that way of going. I've, I've had them work better reverse way, though, before we've sent them. I would say that. And she's drawn 14, uh, 13 out of 14 with 58 kilos. I think she's the best mare in the race. And she does have G-Boss, and we are going to go forward. I think if the first three or four hundred metres we go forward um, and have some position by the time we get around the first corner, that'll put the race on for us. Um, just got to get round. Just well, like anything you take into state, she's got to uh, travel properly. Uh, she'll be nearly stepping off the float as we speak.
and um, you know settle in properly and handle that way going and she can win if she handles all those little jumps. Is that always a query, the reverse way of going when you take horses up to Sydney? It is. Um, look, they're very good here at Caulfield. Um, Jason Kerr allows us reverse way gallops. We've just got to sort of organise no horses on the steeple grass at the time. It's a good grass to work horses reverse way there. You can use the 1400 metres as a winning post and you get a couple of corners to whiz around and they're usually on the fence. So it's a good educational gallop for them before they go. Um, but yeah, it is. It is. How do you think she'll handle the step up to the 1900? Uh, not a problem. I think her right distance is going to be between 2000 and 24. Uh, I've been dying to get her up into a, a proper journey as a staying type of mare. She's a big strong mare, looks a bit like a big strong gelding, big buxom sort of thing. Um, so I just want to get a consistent pattern of uh, staying races under her belt and I think you'll see a pretty nice mare. And at Morpherville on Saturday, you've got Double Annie and the Robert Stanks, the stakes, and she ran really well. She won really well at Flemington last time out. She did. Uh, she's going really well. Um, I would think she's going to be very competitive there. The pace will be on. Uh, she'll have a nice run in the race. She's drawn a good gate, and she gets her chance to win a Group 1. What's the plan with her for after Saturday? Well, if she wins, we'll drink some beer. <laughs> best from your team for this weekend, Mick? The best from my team? Um, you want Mooney Valley? Wherever the, wherever the money's going to be. I think... I think with a nice run in the race, uh, Spacecraft will be very, very hard to beat at his first try at 2,000 metres here at Caulfield with Ben Noble on.